All right, in this video, I'll be explaining some basics of Unreal Engine. Let's go ahead and get started. So I've jumped into a scene in Unreal Engine. I've added a few objects and I'm gonna explain how to add objects, how to move around and how to transform objects. And maybe to start off, let's explain how the heck I'm moving around here. Obviously I've added some objects. So if I hold the right mouse button, right? And I pan around, I'm obviously moving. I'm moving my, my virtual head. Now I can move around left, right, backwards, forwards by using the WASD keys, but W makes you go forward, S goes back. A to the left, D to the right. Very simple. You have to be holding the right mouse button to do this. You cannot just do it without it. Besides moving, there is movement speed. So if you come up here to your upper right hand corner of your viewport, you'll notice that my speed is set to 0.33. I can move this up to let's say 32 and I can fly all the way over here side of the landscape. This is useful because if you have large, large objects or landscapes that you need to move around, you have to move at a quicker speed. But once I get closer right here, it becomes very difficult to move at that speed. So I'm going to need to knock this down to let's just call it 0.1. And so now I'm moving kind of like a snail through my site or my scene. So that's super, super important to understand. Now that you know how to move, let's explain how to move objects. I'll explain how to add objects in a second, but let's explain how to move objects and how to transform them. So if I click this door right here, right, I get a, a little gumball gizmo thing and I can move the object up, can move it left and right and forward backwards, by just using the arrows, simple enough. These colors are related to the X, Y, Z, as you see at the bottom left-hand side of the viewport. Again, if you've used 3D software, you kind of know what this is, okay? so. Simple enough, you're moving it, and this correlates to this little move transformer or translate object. And it shows you that W is the hotkey for it. Now, if I wanted to rotate an object, I select this, I can rotate on the three axes again. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And then you have scale. Simple enough, and by hitting the middle, you kind of get a uniform scale. What I wanna explain is it's very annoying to come up here and switch it. So using the hotkeys W gets you to the translate object gizmo. Okay, and then E is rotation, and then R is scale. W E R. Now, one thing I want to explain is you have some of these snaps. Okay. You see this is snapping on a grid of 10 pixels. I don't know what the heck this is. A, a grid. I'm calling it a pixel. I don't know what the unit measurement is here, but it's at 10. If I move this up to, let's say 500. So if I do this, you'll see that's 500, whatever units that is. Okay. So if I go back to 10, you'll see it's much smoother. All right. Now, same thing applies to whatever this thing is, which looks like uh, an angle, right? So this is a 10 if I move it to 90 degrees press E to rotate and I can rotate things at 90 degree increments which is very very useful okay so I'm gonna go back to 10 here and then we'll just undo all this business okay so simple enough simple enough now I want to explain this outliner okay this outliner shows you everything that's in the scene everything that's in your viewport things that you can see things that you maybe can't see but affects the scene there is a structure. So you see all the lighting is in this folder. It's probably best to be organized when you're using the outliner. So you see these landscapes. These are these things right here, these objects. Okay, the, the landscapes are pre-built in this file, but you see that they're, they're made up of these components and they're under this landscape organizational object, I'll call it. And then within that, there are all these separate items. Now these separate items relate to things I've placed in the scene. I can go ahead and I could select, okay, this object. I can click F, okay, and that zooms me right into it. I should have explained this earlier. It's another movement command if I select another object, F. So I can be very, very far away and I can select this object. I can zoom right to it. Okay, so that's pretty beneficial. This one right here, and I press F, and I get straight to it. Back to the outliner, I got kind of distracted. And if you want to be organized, I'd probably place these in a folder themselves or a group. And you could just come up here, create a new folder. I'm going to call this folder. I can, I can come here and I can go to edit, rename. I'm going to call it objects. Okay, so objects. And then I could just select these things and move it into objects. Actually, because I was selecting and I created a new folder, it automatically moved this object in there. So that's why that's there. So I can select these objects and I can just drag them up to objects. And now they're in objects and I can hide these and everything in that folder will be hidden. So say I want to add an object. How do I do that? And then I'll come back to the outliner. I can add objects in a few ways. Now, there are things native to Unreal Engine. If I come up to this little plus sign, come down here. Let's go to shapes. Here are some shapes. So if I click cube, I get a cube. Okay, fantastic. If I come up here again, go to shapes, 
go to sphere, I get a sphere. So if you wanted to copy this cube, you can hold down alt and then use the arrow to copy this thing. And you'll notice that once I did that, I got cube two appearing in my outliner. Okay, so I created an instance of this thing. That's one way of adding things in a scene. But most people tend to use content browser. Okay, so if you don't see it, if it's just something like this, and you may not have light mixer, don't worry about that. Click the content drawer and then dock and layout. And what that's gonna do is, is just going to throw it in the middle of my, I guess, the viewport. And then I'm just gonna drag it down here and I'm gonna dock it into this uh, little panel. Okay, and that's just gonna make things easier. Now, if you don't have this panel, um, say light mixer is off and let's say content browser is not here. All you need to do is just drag it to the bottom if you want it to look like mine or you could drag it to the side, whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Now, the way this works is kind of like your Windows Explorer if you use Windows. Things are organized from a larger meta scale and it subdivides into folders. So right now you see I have a cargo folder, a starter content, and I have a level. It's important to understand levels. I'm not gonna explain it in detail now. Just know that the thing I'm in right now is a level. And when you save a file, you come up here, file, save current level. If you've never done this before and you've created a new scene, it's gonna just ask you to save the level. All you need to do is just name it something. I've named mine one, and I'll probably get into this in another video about levels, but I'm not gonna get into it now. But just know you have a starter content, you have cargo. Well, you don't have cargo. You're gonna have starter content, so if I click into this. So if I go to, let's just say architecture, there's some pre-built objects like walls and cutouts of uh, doors here, or openings for movement, things like windows, blah, 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 blah. And technically you can lay this stuff out and start modeling a building, right? Like I could just add more walls, right? I could just rotate these things. I'm not gonna be super precise here. I'm just gonna move it here, right? If I come to things like props, I have a certain amount of objects pre-selected for me or pre-produced for me that I could place into my scene. Okay, and that's how this asset management works in Unreal Engine. You, you really just find uh, a folder where you have objects and you import them in simply as I'm showing you. And you can notice every time I do that, it pops up into my outliner. That's how the structure of this asset manager works. Okay. Now to come back to the outliner, if I wanted this chair to be in my objects folder, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't go in there. It just kind of gets thrown in the general outliner. But if I wanted it to actually show up in this folder, because I know maybe I'm, I'm adding objects and I want them all to be in this folder and I don't want to just always drag them back in after I put them in, I can go ahead and right click the objects folder. I can go to make current folder and then I can move this chair into the file. It will create an instance, a copy of it, and it'll pop up directly to the top of this folder. Now, if I want to place this corner frame, let's say I don't want it in the object folder, Right now you'll see it jumped into the objects folder. I'm gonna undo it. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click this and say clear current folder. So now it is not the current folder that it is gonna be where things get copied into. So right here, clear enough, it is not in the objects folder. So again, if I hide the objects in the objects folder, it will not disappear, but the others will. So every time you move an object in, it creates an instant, a copy of it. You'll see the actual object being added into the outliner, as I said before. So that's how this is working. If you want to add an object you created in SketchUp or Rhino, all you're gonna need to do is create a folder for those objects. I would suggest creating a, let's go to new folder. And so that's right clicking, clicking new folder. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this and call it models. Okay, name it whatever you like, whatever makes sense to you. Inside here, you can just go to import, right? And then you'll import any objects you have. It could be an OBJ, it could be something else. It just depends on what you're using. Now, there is DataSmith, which you can use to import things directly from architectural softwares that, that have a plugin that connects directly into it. Again, I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because I'm just uh, assuming we're, we're importing things that you find online or you are importing OBJs and things of that nature. All right, so I told myself I'm not going to cover the level things in this video, but I, I might as well because if you save your file and come back to it, you might come back to something that looks empty just like this and not what I had before. And that's because of the level that you have to create. Once you save a file, when you exit, it asks you to save a level. You might not even realize it's doing that. But when you come back to your file, you'll notice that you have uh, whatever you named your, your file, whatever you thought you named your file was actually your level. So mine was called one. And so if I double click into this level and usually it's gonna save it if you're not specifically placing it somewhere, it's gonna be in, in the generals kind of uh, content folder. So mine is right here, double click it. You need to double click it and it will load your level. Okay, and that's because you can have multiple levels in project, right? So you can have multiple scenes 
multiple levels in one single project. I covered most of the things I wanted to talk about. One other neat thing about, you know, let's say Unreal 101 and creating a scene is controlling the sun over here. See this? If you hold Control L, okay, you get this, I don't know, uh, sky gizmo, sun gizmo, sun path. I don't know what you call it, but if you move your mouse now while holding Control and L, it's moving the path of the sun, right? And so you can make it nighttime. Right? And if you have things that are glowing, they will glow. It's like you can see my scene and you can move it around. It's kind of hard to control, but um, I think there is a manual way of doing this, but this is kind of the funnest way of doing it. And so I can have like a little, you know, sunset situation, sunrise behind the, the hills over there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a neat thing to know. It's kind of like Unreal Engine 101 and, and scene making. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be following up with more videos to add on to the layers that we learned here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.